We're now going to look at how to calculate the aggregate expenditure model and how to see what the equilibrium GDP should be. Let's firstly assume a closed economy with no taxes and no international trade. So Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus XM is your complete model. But if we look at a closed economy, we're not going to have any government expenditure because we're going to assume there's no taxes and no government expenditure, and there's not going to be any international trade in this closed economy. So, Y is equal to C plus I. How can we determine what the equilibrium level of output should be? Well, we know what C is. C is equal to A plus BY, where that is your marginal propensity consumed. But what is I equal to? What is investment equal to? Well, we know that the investment demand curve is a function of the real interest rate and investment. So if the real interest rate is at a certain level, say R1, it's going to correspond to a certain level of investment, say I1. And As GDP changes, or as input, as the income or output changes, this level of I1 is going to remain the same just because it's going to correspond to that level of R1. So Y investment. So investment will remain the same through all the different values of output. So how can we define or find out what the equilibrium output is. Let's draw that in terms of output. So now we need the graph for C plus I. And we know that C is equal to A plus BY. So you're going to have an interception point which is equal to A since Y is equal to A plus BY plus I. Both of these are constants. So you're going to have a level of A plus I. In first year, you don't need to know what exactly these levels are. I'm just showing you what the intercept would be. <coughs> showing you what the intercept would be, and then you would get the equation in terms of the marginal propensity to assume it would slope up with the slope of B. These values you don't need to know. What you do need to know is that how we can find equilibrium in this instance. The corner here is aggregate expenditure. This is how much we spend on goods, and this is how, ma how many goods are produced. So this is the value of goods that we want to buy, how much money we're spending on goods, and this is how, ma how many goods, how much goods are actually produced. So, where is equilibrium? Equilibrium is where AE is equal to Y. The amount that you spend on goods is equal to the amount of goods that you produce. This is where equilibrium occurs. Now how can you find the point where AE is equal to Y? You have to draw a 45 degree line. So let's assume that's a 45 degree line. 45 degrees. Why do we have a 45 degree line? Well because at every point on this 45 degree line, AE is going to equal Y. It's going to be 1, 1 there, 2, 2 there, 3, 3 there. At every point, the value for AE and the value for Y will be the same along this 45 degree line. So if you find the interception between the 45 degree line and the aggregate expenditure curve, this is your aggregate expenditure curve. If you find that intercept, such as there, you found the point of equilibrium, where the amount that you spend on goods is equal to the goods that are produced. Great, now what are we going to say? What happens if we're at a point such as here? What happens if at Y2 you got less output than you would at equilibrium? Well, which value is higher than which? The aggregate expenditure curve is higher than the 45 degree line, so the aggregate expenditure is higher than the amount of output in the economy. So if the aggregate expenditure curve is higher, that means that you're spending more on goods and there aren't as many goods being produced. And if you're spending more on goods and there aren't any goods being, enough goods being produced, 
firms are going to have to go into the inventories and they're going to have to sell some of their inventories to, to reach that demand. So this is the key here. Whenever aggregate expenditure or your total spending is greater than total production, you're going to have unintended inventory shortfall. So remember that. Whenever aggregate expenditure or on any part of this when you're below equilibrium and output is lower than your aggregate expenditure, you're going to have unintended inventory shortfall. So your inventories are going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Managers of the firms are going to see this. They're going to see that their inventories are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're going to say, oh, we better increase production. So they're going to increase production and they're going to carry on increasing production up until the point where they get to equilibrium when suddenly the level of the inventories remains the same. Okay, so they'll increase production up until the point where the level of the inventories remains the same. In this case here, when equilibrium is below the value of your actual output, let's say Y3, here you can see that your aggregate expenditure is lower than the output that you produce. And in that case, you have unintended inventory accumulation. So those are the key words there. Unintended inventory accumulation. And if you have unintended inventory accumulation, managers are going to see that there's more inventory piling on, and they're going to say, oh, we better slow down production. So they'll slow down the amount of output that they produce up until the point when their inventories remain the same. So that's how you get to equilibrium in the system. You'll shift that way, and you'll shift that way.